preparation, revelation, and execution. These are three main stages in the life of anyone that will fulfill God's purpose for his life. And it's extremely important that we understand that if we're going to fulfill the assignment that God has placed upon our lives. My name is Joseph Binbo Akinjoku. And today we'll be looking at these three stages and how it applies to you where you are right now so that you can with the whole of your heart and without any form of pressure cooperate with God towards the fulfillment of his purpose for your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to go into your word yet again. Speak to us, Lord, in the language that we can understand. Help us, Lord God, to cooperate with you by virtue of the understanding that we will gain as we encounter the truth that is in your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Welcome once again to the light of life. It is on this platform that we communicate the truth of the word of God, providing you with divine light so that you can pursue and fulfill your divine purpose. Today, like I told you, we'll be looking at certain critical stages in the pursuit of your divine purpose. You may be, in fact, you would most likely be at a particular stage right now. And if you don't know what to expect at that stage, chances are you'll be under a whole lot of pressure trying to bring another stage that you are not in to manifestation when you have not yet come into that part. But when you understand where you are in the divine scheme of things, you'll be at rest and then you'll be able to cooperate with God so that what he expects your life to bring forth, the kind of fruits that he wants your life to bring forth at that season of your life, you can cooperate with him to make it a reality. So that's why we are focusing on this teaching. Let me start by reiterating something that I've said over and over in the course of our teachings on this platform. God created you for a unique and specific purpose. And that purpose, it is your commitment to it that will determine the divine reward that you will have. In fact, it is what is going to determine whether or not you are qualified for a divine reward or not. Because God is not going to reward you for mere activities. God is going to reward you for doing what he has called you to do. So what he has called you to do may not be attractive to others. And it may be attractive to some others. But whether you follow it being as in you follow it on the basis of the fact that it is attractive or not, God is still going to reward you on the basis of the assignment that he has placed upon your life. God would not reward Peter for fulfilling the assignment of John. God would not reward Elijah for doing the work of David. Every man has a unique purpose that God wants his life to be about. And you need to understand your own and celebrate your uniqueness in it. And look forward to God rewarding you for that. There are many kinds of activities that we engage ourselves in, in the body of Christ today, even in the different churches. All of them are good. But we must understand that good does not necessarily mean right when it comes to divine reward. God will reward you not just for doing a good thing, but for doing the right thing, what he expects you to do. Praise the Lord. Now, when it comes to pursuing divine purpose, there are three main stages, like I listed out at the beginning of this video. There is a stage of preparation. There is a stage of revelation. And there is a stage of execution. From the time that you were born, like we saw in Jeremiah chapter 1, when God was speaking unto Jeremiah, he said, while you were in your mother's womb, I ordained you and chose you to be a prophet. So God had an assignment upon his life and it was to be a prophet. And not just to be a prophet because there were many prophets in the land at that point in time. He was to be a prophet unto the nations to uproot and to 
plant. He was to be a prophet to do certain specific things that God placed upon his life. So he had a jurisdiction in line with his assignment. So he wasn't just to go everywhere, anywhere, doing whatever that seemed good that other prophets before him had done. God had a specific assignment for his life. And that assignment was revealed before, or let me say, that assignment had been in the mind of God before he was even formed in his mother's womb. Before his father met his mother, that assignment had been upon his life because he had existed as a spirit being, as an entity in the heart of God before he was formed. So, but that assignment will not be executed until he has first of all been prepared for it and he has come into a place of revelation before that assignment can be performed. So, we need to understand this in our pursuit of God's purpose for our lives. Now, election has to do with God singling or God doing something that sets you apart in his mind even before you were born. That is what election is all about. It has nothing to do with your performance. It has nothing to do with your activities or your work. The grace of election is strictly on the basis of God's divine prerogative. God is the one that has you in his mind. He's the one that conceptualized you. He's the one that determined what you are going to fulfill. Not you. And it has nothing to do with the circumstances that surround your birth. It is strictly God's decision concerning your life. That is what election is all about. But election does not automatically transform into execution. When God has elected a man before that man's birth, before that man's conception, he waits until the time that the purpose that he has created that man for will find relevance. Every man that is born of a woman right now, every man that even uh, that has existed and the one that is existing and the one that will even existed, uh, that will even exist, sorry, every single human being was created by God in one day. And that's why we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says that God created them male and female. He created them. That is the word creates. But God started the process of forming in Genesis chapter 2 when there was need for Adam. So your creation has been done in Genesis chapter 1. God had already created you like we saw in Genesis chapter 1. But there will not be a forming for any man until the time that God had for that purpose for his life to be birthed. So you only came on earth, you only showed up when the season that had been appointed for your purpose to be revealed came on the scene. So that is not a function of any other thing but God's sovereignty. There is a purpose of God and there is a season, both of them as determined by God. That is what I believe God's sovereignty is about. His purpose for mankind and the season in which that purpose will be fulfilled. For example, John the Baptist by divine design, was supposed to be the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was his purpose. God intended that before he was born. And therefore, no matter what the circumstances may be, God would not let John the Baptist come before Jesus Christ's coming was put, as in before the timing of our Lord Jesus Christ was set. Why? Because if he had come, then he would not have been able to fulfill his purpose because the one he was supposed to come before, to introduce, was not ready to come. Therefore, his purpose would have been totally irrelevant. 
That's what it means. So God had a purpose for John the Baptist, but he had a season attached to it. And when those two aligned, John the Baptist came forth through Zechariah and Elizabeth. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says that all the things that God created were in the earth and none of them manifested for two reasons. One, there was no man to till the ground. And two, God had not caused rain to fall upon the ground. That was why in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says that God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into him and man became a living soul. And then in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, the Bible says that God took the man that he had made and placed him in the garden to do what? To dress and to keep it. There was a need and God formed Adam to come and meet that need. And it was that need that his life was all about. The purpose of his life was built around to dress and to keep the garden. Hallelujah. When the garden had not been formed, there was no need for Adam to be formed, even though he had been created. Look at it again. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God said it was not good for man, Adam in this case, to be alone. I will make a help that is meat for him, a help that is suitable for him. What was the help coming to do? To assist Adam, which means until Adam understood the need for a help, the help was not going to be provided. I don't even get what I'm trying to say. There was a need for Eve before God formed her. There was a need for her. That's why God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help that is meet for him. Which means this help was coming to ensure that man did not abide alone. The need arose and therefore the formation came. Eve came on the scene. Your purpose is pretty much in the same way. You have a purpose. And that purpose will only surface when the need arises. What then happens? Execution is the manifestation of that purpose. But there is a preparation and a revelation before the execution. The preparation is after you have been born, God now begins to orchestrate the events around your life, to equip you, to train you, so that you will be able to fulfill that purpose. When you were born, you didn't have what it takes to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Yes, many of those things have been put on the inside of you in form of gifts and talents that are in it, that have not yet been made manifest. But there are certain circumstances and situations that God will take you through so that you can be very well prepared. And preparation is what will bring out that purpose, as in that will bring out those giftings, those abilities that you have been pre-equipped with, so that when the time of execution comes, you will be able to deploy them effectively for the fulfillment of God's purpose on the earth. Note, you and even the gifting of God, the deposit of grace that is in you, the seasons, everything revolves around not you, but the purpose of God. The purpose of God. It does not revolve around your preferences, but the purpose of God. It does not revolve around your own desires, but the purpose of God. The purpose of God is what has been and is what will continue to be. Men have been, men are, and men will be. But the purpose of God remains intact. Different chapters of it are what the lives of men are about. And those who cooperate with God to fulfill the chapter that God has built their life around are the only ones that will be qualified 
for divine reward when the time of divine assessment comes. So you need to understand this. Look at the life of Joseph, for example. God, by divine revelation unto him, made it clear that he wanted him to be a leader. But he did not understand the kind of leader God wanted him to be. He saw two dreams, and as in visions of the night. He saw the one where he was binding sheaves with his brothers, and he saw the one of the sun, the moon, and the stars bowing down unto him. We saw this in Genesis chapter 37. But he did not understand what it was all about. And when the time began to draw near, what did God do? God orchestrated him being sent out of his father's house into in the land of Egypt. He understood this. The enemy thought they were going to destroy him. The brothers, out of their envy, thought they were going to ruin him, silence him forever. Not knowing that it was God that was orchestrating the situation. That's why when you read the book of Psalm 105, the Bible says that God sent him ahead of them. Why? Because it was God that was working everything out for the glory of his name and for the fulfillment of his own will and purpose. He says he sent a man ahead of them. them even the man, Joseph. Hallelujah. So it is the purpose of God that was at the center of it all. And God was saying that this man, for as long as he continued in his father's house, his potentials, the things that he needed to fulfill my mandate, my purpose will never manifest. And therefore, God orchestrated him to be sent into the land of Egypt, where he will be given responsibilities. And as soon as he arrived at Potiphar's house, assignments were placed upon his life. He began to administer so much that the grace of God now began to manifest in his life. All of these were stages of preparation in his life before he could eventually come into the place of the fulfillment of God's purpose for his life. This teaching is going to take a couple of episodes, at least two. So I'm laying this foundation so that you'll be able to follow me and then assess your life critically to know where you are. And then when you understand where you are, you will not be under immense pressure to bring in what it is not yet time for. Because there is nothing you can do to pressure God to reduce the timing for his purpose. When it is not yet time, when the season has not yet come, he will not bring it. So you can rest in his will, cooperating with him to ensure that where you are, the best that he requires of you is what you are doing. Hallelujah. So how does this happen? When you are in the stage of preparation, there are four areas of your life that God will deal with. Like I told you, Joseph was brought into Egypt in Genesis chapter 9, so that his potentials that are relevant to the purpose of God for his life can be brought to the fore, can be properly exercised before the time of his purpose. What was his purpose? His purpose was to preserve life. His purpose was not even to become prime minister like many of us think today. No. His purpose was actually to preserve life. God sent him ahead of the children of Israel so that he can be in a position to nourish the children of Israel that he will be sending into the land of Egypt. It was when Israel arrived and he began to nourish those ones, it was at that point that he began to execute God's purpose for his life. That was the execution. I'm going to come to that. But when it comes to preparation, like we saw in Potiphar's house, in prison, there are many things that God will do in your life to prepare you for purpose. Many of those things may be things that will bring you out of your comfort zone, that will be unpalatable for you. There may be experiences that you do not even like at all. But if it is God that is working in you and with you, 
then you must learn to cooperate with him. When we look at the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52, we saw four major areas in which our Lord Jesus Christ grew. These were the things that happened to him in the stages of his preparation. He was a son of God as at the time Mary gave birth unto him. He was as much a son of God when he was in that cradle, when he was in the manger, as he was at the age of 30. But there was need for him to go through a process, a period of preparation in four major areas of his life. It was when that period had been completed and it was then that it was made manifest to his world. And guess what? This period of his life took at least 18 years. Because from the time that he was 12, when he began to speak in the synagogue and began to debate the doctors and the Pharisees, from that time until the age of 30, when the Holy Ghost came upon him during his baptism, that was 18 good years. And that was a period of continuous growth for him. What are the areas he grew in? In Luke chapter 2 verse 52, the Bible says that he increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor with God and increased in favor with men. These are four areas you must subject yourself to God's training in if you are going to fulfill your purpose. Because if you are not prepared properly, you will not come into a place where you experience the revelation. And if you are not revealed, you cannot execute. That's how it is. Many of us need to understand that even if you don't miss anything at all, the period of preparation will always take time. Don't make the mistake of thinking that because you have been anointed, or a vision has been seen in your life, it automatically means that you begin to manifest. No. There is a period of preparation that you must definitely go through. Look at the life of David. He was anointed to be king by Saul, sorry, by Samuel. Saul was the one that was king at that point in time. David was 17 years old. But he did not become king until he was 30. Which means for 13 good years, he was being prepared. Hallelujah. He was undergoing preparation. It was within those three years, those seven, sorry, 13 years, that he began, that he continued doing what? Taking care of his father's sheep. God made reference to that in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 78 from verse 70, that he took him from behind the sheep, from where he was taking care of the few sheep that his father had. And God took him to become the captain over his flock. To, and he led them with the skillfulness of his hands and the integrity of his heart. What is the purpose of preparation? To help you develop skill and to help you establish integrity. That is what it is all about. To bring you into a place where you develop skill and then where you develop integrity. Why? There was a reason why apostles said that a novice should not be given the assignment of leadership so that he will not fall into the condemnation of the devil. If he had not been established, he will not be able to to execute correctly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we need to understand these things. God will take you through the period of preparation. And what are the areas he will prepare you in? The first is in the area of wisdom. You need to know how to develop capacity. God will take you through different stages in your life that will help you develop capacity. He will take you through different experiences in life that will enable you to develop capacity. Some of them will be unpalatable experiences. Some of them 
will take you out of your comfort zone. Some of them you may even like, but all of them are towards you, coming to a place where you will develop proper capacity. It would require you reading and learning. I remember in my first year in the university, I had been studying scriptures for quite a while and I'd been seeing points and I wanted to write a book. And I spoke with one of my friends then that I'm thinking of writing a book, publishing a book, that the, when I study scriptures, I see a whole lot of things that come out at me and I believe I should share them with people. And I believe one of the best ways to do it is by writing a book. And the guy looked at me and said, that's a very good idea, but that there's something he wants me to do that if I'm going to be a good author, that I need to spend time reading books. I said, I've been reading. He said, he knows. He said, but he wants me to read more books because there's a way to present your ideas. There's a way to present your understanding to people to communicate effectively with them so that they can retain it. It is one thing to know what you want to say. It is another thing to be skillful in the communication of what you are passing across. It is your skill that people will connect with, not necessarily your anointing. Your anointing may impact them, but if they are going to draw wisdom from you, then you must have the skill to communicate it correctly unto them. And I took his counsel and for 10 years, I continued reading. I published my first newsletter 10 years after that. Not because I didn't have the knowledge, but because I needed wisdom. I needed the wisdom. The Bible says that Joshua Christ grew in wisdom. He increased. The spirit of wisdom was in him. Yet the Bible says he increased in wisdom. Why? Because it is one thing to you, for you to have wisdom in you. The expression of wisdom is a completely different thing. And that is where a whole lot of people miss it. There are a lot of people who have the divine wisdom of God, but are not communicating it effectively. Therefore, they are not being a blessing to their world the way they are supposed to be. So God takes you through a process of capacity development. He could take you through schools. That is one stage of it. But he will also take you through certain stages in life. He will expose you to certain situations and circumstances. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, And the God of all grace, who has called you unto his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, those sufferings are things that God deliberately exposes you to for your capacity development. For you to develop stamina on the inside, to communicate effectively the message that he puts in your heart. To communicate effectively the grace that is pouring onto the world through you. And that takes time. Yes, you'll be a blessing to certain people at this stage of your life. But that is not the level at which God will want you to operate. He still wants you to be learning. That's why he told Timothy, he said, till I come, give attention unto reading. That's 1 Timothy, I think chapter 3, from verse 14. He says, give attention unto reading, unto exhortation, and unto teaching. He says, give attention to doctrine, to reading, to exhortation. Because there is always a process that is involved that requires you constantly developing capacity. Bible speaking concerning John Baptist, but it says he was in the wilderness. So he grew in grace and he was strong in spirit. And he abode in the wilderness until the time of, of his appearing unto Israel. So you need to develop wisdom and God will take you through different processes of life. You must learn to draw the wisdom at such stages. Joseph was in Potiphar's house. He learned wisdom. He was put in prison. He learned wisdom. 
He kept increasing in wisdom. When he was in Potiphar's house, all he could do was administer. And he did very well with it. But that was not God's purpose for his life. When he was in prison, he added the ability to interpret dreams to that. But was that his life? No. His life was not about interpreting dreams. That was just a stage in his life. God was developing capacity on the inside of him. That was why he was taking him through those different stages of life. So you could be right now, in the course of God, preparing you. You could actually be developing capacity. People will disappoint you. People will hurt you. People will treat you wrongly. Look at the case of Joseph. He was mistreated. Look at the case of David. He was winning battles for Saul. And Saul was supposed to like him. But Saul made his life hell. But all of that was still preparation for him. When you are in the stage of preparation, God will cause men to ride over your head. You will go through the fire and through the waters. But it will eventually bring you into the place of rich fulfillment. A place where you have the platform to execute what it has for you. Therefore, don't develop any bitterness when God is taking you through these different stages. You know why? Because there's something you need to know that you need to develop also. It is called stature. Stature is referring to the way you appear before men and also in the spirit realm. When men have not developed stature, they are not known either in the spirit or in the physical. But the first stature you must focus on is the stature in the spirit where you have an identity in the divine scheme of things. You are no longer a baby but you have become a son. Remember when the angel came to introduce Jesus to the world. When he was talking to the, as in to Joseph, he was constantly referring to Jesus as a child. <laughs> when he was talking to the shepherds, he referred to Jesus as a child. Why? Because in the spirit realm then, yes, he was the son of God, but he was still a child because he had not yet developed stature. There are ways that you will be seen in the spirit realm and you need to develop stature. Jesus Christ developed that stature. That was why when the time came for him to be announced, God himself spoke and said, this is my beloved son. He was no longer a child. He had become a son. Why? Because there had been an elevation of status. He is now a son. That's why he said, he said, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. He didn't say that to him when he was a baby. It was when he had assumed stature that he had that. Thou art my beloved son. This day have I begotten thee. Because it is when you have developed in preparation, in God's school, it is then that you become one that is a son. Why? Because you have risen. You have assumed the stature of a son. Many Christians never leave the position of a child. They never. And therefore, assignments are not committed into their hands. Destinies are not committed into their hands. They never come into a place of revelation. Why? Because they are still children, not sons. It is when you subject yourself to God's training, that is when you translate from being a child to being a son. And please, let me tell you categorically, it takes time. It takes time. You need to understand, therefore, 
that there is no need for you to be in a hurry. You need to learn to go through the different places of God and draw the wisdom part time and develop the capacity so that you can increase in stature. Hallelujah. You need to know that every situation, every circumstance that faces you, they are not meant to break you. They are meant to help you develop capacity. When boxers are being trained, they bring all manner of things to them that they will need to punch they will need to face. They have to go through endurance, endurance training. It happens to all athletes. They face different obstacles. But it is not because they are hated. It is because stature is being developed in them. Hallelujah. It happens in the spirit realm and also in the physical. That's why Jesus Christ had to increase in stature. All of these are pointing to the preparation stages. In our lives. Hallelujah. So we need to understand all of this. As I begin to round up, let me point because it's not something we can exhaust. We'll have to go over this, um, take a couple of weeks to go through this, a couple of episodes. Just stick with this light of life and keep checking this platform because this teaching is going to continue. But you need to understand that the wisdom and the stature are crucial for your appearing, for your revelation. If you have not gotten there, if God has to continue working on you and you keep falling by the wayside and then you rise again and then you fall by the wayside, you will just be prolonging the journey. That's why you need to learn to sit down in his presence and develop stamina in your inner man. Let me tell you something. Do you know that the period between Acts chapter 9 when Apostle Paul was, um, when he encountered Christ on the journey to Damascus, the journey between that time and Acts 13, when the Holy Ghost spoke, said, Separate unto me Paul and Barnabas, uh, Barnabas for the work whereunto I have called them. Do you know that that period was at least 17 years? 17 good years. So there's a period of preparation that you need to learn to cooperate with God to make manifest in your life. Forget about the things that you are going through. It is all because of where you are going. But you must learn to submit to his program. If he's going to eventually fulfill that purpose through you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word that we have received today. Let this word, O God, continue to grow and expand by the power of your spirit in the hearts of everyone watching this video and listening to this teaching. Let their lives never remain the same. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. God bless you.